So this tutorial is to show how to set up a spreadsheet for answering the question, how accurate are weather forecasts? I'm going to start with the raw data here, which pretty much was copied from like a weather.com for each day. And for those, for each day, we have, um, um, you know, the forecast for what today's going to be, what tomorrow's going to be, what the next day is going to be, and so on. And this is a subset of the data. And this goes out, say, five days. Now, I'm going to set it up just for high temperatures. I usually set up a sheet for each variable. So, we're, so I'm going to just copy these these things. I'm going to ignore today's forecast, but we're going to need to have the actual value, what actually happened on the day on September 10th, on September 11th, etc., as we go as we go through. So I'm going to copy that over, and I get this this sheet here, and that's just this is just the high temperature data. Now, if I want to know how good are one day forecasts and well, how day, you know, good day forecasts, I, I need to really look at each day and how, uh, you know, what a one day forecast for that day would be. So, so say a one day forecast, uh, two day forecast, etc. All right, uh, three day. Now, I have I have those. Now, let me let me copy this these these dates here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna put them down. I'm gonna put them down over over here. Now I'm gonna I'm actually gonna work a little bit backwards. I'm gonna start over here. Now, and in, in fact, actually I'm gonna I'm going to take this and move it down one, just so that I can do the kind of what actually happened. So what actually happened on these days, I'm going to copy right here, copy and paste that. Okay. I'm going to work a little bit backwards here. A one day forecast for let's just get rid of that. Okay. Um, one day forecast for the 15th would have been done on the 14th because you know the 14th one day forecast would have been for the 15th, kind of predict what the weather was going to be like on the 15th. So the one day forecast for the 15th would have come from the 14th and that'd be 74. The two day forecast for the 15th would have been done two days before the 15th, so it would be done on the 13th. And so the, so, so the 13th of September two day forecast is really trying to predict what the 15th of September is going to be like. So that two day forecast is 70. Three. And notice that we are comparing it to what actually happened on the 15th. So this was what was predicted. 74 was what, what was predicted one day before. 73 from what was predicted one day before that. And then 64 um, was predicted before that. That's the three-day forecast, which we printed out on the 12th. Three days ahead would be the 15th. So that would be the, uh, the, the data there. So we can follow that pattern pretty much the uh, one day forecast for the third for the 14th for the 14th of September will be the one day forward forecast from the 13th so that would be 80 and then 79 and then 78 and notice that I once I realize that I'm really just following the diagonal going down and that will get me um, my uh, my thing so then so again this would be 81 78 and 78, 81, 78, and 78 as we go as we go through. Uh, the one-day forecast for the 12th comes from the seventh, from from the 11th. For the the two-day forecast for the 12th will come from the 10th, and that would be 76. And the three-day forecast for the 12th would have been done on the 9th, and we don't have data for that, so we have to leave that blank. And and we follow this one. This will be 72. Um, because the one-day forecast for the 11th came from the 10th. So that sets up our data. Okay, notice that we have some missing data and, and so on. Now I want to look at the differences. So let's imagine that I have um, <clears throat> one-day difference, two-day difference, and a three-day difference. Now I actually want... Okay, so what I want to do is the one-day difference is really equal to, so I'll do the equal sign, the forecast for one day minus what actually happened. Negative one means the forecast was low. 
positive one, which means the forecast was high. I can then just simply copy this for all the days. <clears throat> the two-day difference, likewise, is, and I actually have to start over here <clears throat> because there's no because there's no two-day forecast. So, um, so I need to start right here. This is equal to the two-day forecast minus the actual. And again, I copy this all the way over. And then for, for the three-day, I start over here with all the data equals this minus the actual. And then I copy it. Okay. Now, how good the forecast is is really an average of the various differences. So, so I can look at the average and the standard deviation. All right. And so this is really just equal to the average and I select the range. I'm going to just do the whole range for the whole, whole data and that gives me that. I'm going to do the average here. I can actually just copy this now all the way down and then I can do the same thing for the standard deviation. It's just STDEV um, and across here and then copy that down and just to make it so that it, the, the title match, matches the uh, um, the function name. Okay. Very good. So now we can see that essentially, you know, the one-day forecasts are better than the three-day. We can actually quantify that. Um, none of them show the uh, the actual the actual three-day forecast shows a bias in the uh, underestimating because it's minus sign no, minus five plus or minus two point three, so it's all before zero, and and there's no bias shown in the uh, um, the other one. That's how we can use the standard deviation. So this is how we set up the uh, the spreadsheet in order to answer this question.